website, democracynow.org. As we turn now to another story, one of the top stories of the year, of course, has been WikiLeaks. Juan? Well, when WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was released from a British jail this month, he downplayed the prospect of an extradition to Sweden, where he's wanted for questioning on allegations of sex crimes. Speaking outside the courthouse, Assange said he is most concerned about extradition to the United States. I don't have too many fears about being extradited to Sweden. Uh, there are much bigger concerns about being extradited to the United States. We, ha we have a rumor today from my lawyers in the United States. We've not confirmed yet that there has uh, been an indictment made uh, against me in the United States. Although Assange hasn't been charged, there are reports the Justice Department has convened the grand jury in Virginia to indict him for WikiLeaks' release of tens of thousands of secret government documents. Earlier this month, Vice President Joe Biden confirmed the U.S. is looking at ways to pursue Assange while he remains under house arrest in Britain. In an interview on Meet the Press, Biden said he thinks Assange could be a, quote, high-tech terrorist. I would argue that it's closer to being a high-tech terrorist than the, than the Pentagon Papers. Um, uh, but, uh, um, look, uh, th this guy has, uh, has done things that have uh, damaged and, and put in jeopardy the lives and, uh, and um, uh, occupations of people in other parts of the world. He's made it diff more difficult for us to conduct our, bi our business with our allies and our friends. U.S. officials have said Julian Assange could be charged under the Espionage Act of 1917 and suggested laws could be amended to overcome any legal obstacles to his prosecution. Well, the potential use of the Espionage Act has special significance for our next guest. In a moment, we'll speak with Robert Mirapol. He's the younger son of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. They're the only U.S. citizens to be executed for conspiracy to commit espionage, described as the most controversial death sentence in U.S. history. The government alleged the couple, along with Morton Sobel, helped the Soviet Union acquire the secret of the atomic bomb, but supporters say there's no evidence Ethel Rosenberg took part in espionage, and the Rosenberg's family has admitted that while Julius Rosenberg did pass on information to the Soviet Union, none of it aided development of the atomic bomb. This is a clip of a newscast after the Rosenberg's execution. Sing Sing, June 19, 1953. Someone had passed America's atomic bomb secrets to Russia. This was an undisputed fact that the whole world knew. The federal government had laid the crime at the doorstep of two native New Yorkers, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. But to the end, they both protested their innocence of the theft. In April of 1951, the federal court of Judge Irving R. Kaufman found the pair guilty as charged and sentenced them to death in the electric chair to pay for their crime of treason. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were killed on June 19, 1953, after being sent to the electric chair at New York Sing Sing Prison. The Rosenberg's younger son, Robert Mirapol, was six years old at the time. He's author of the autobiography, An Execution in the Family, One Son's Journey. He's the founder and executive director of the Rosenberg Fund for Children. This week, he released a widely read statement in support of WikiLeaks called, My parents were executed under the Unconstitutional Espionage Act. Here's why we must fight to protect Julian Assange. Robert Mirapol joins us now from Chicopee, Massachusetts. Welcome to Democracy Now! Why do you feel uh, people must fight to support Julian Assange? Well, well, thank you for having me. Uh, well, there's 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 several layers uh, that we should get into here. Uh, perhaps the start is to understand what he may be indicted for, that is, conspiracy to violate the Espionage Act of 1917. Uh, a lot of people in the United States have been saying since post-9-11 America, in post-9-11 America, that we feel we have echoes of the McCarthy period. But in the McCarthy period itself, we really had the echoes of the uh, aftermath of our entry into World War I, that period between 1917 and the early 1920s. And World War I was very unpopular in the United States. And there was an effort to uh, convince the public about this war. And that was a two-pronged effort. One was propaganda was put in place to drum up support for the war. But the other was the Espionage Act of 1917 was passed basically to criminalize dissent. 
And this criminalization of, of criticism of government policy landed hundreds of people in jail, perhaps most famously Eugene Debs, the Socialist Party candidate for president who ran from a jail cell and got almost a million votes uh, in 1920. Uh, that whole panoply of repressive activity, uh, that quieted down after a while. But in the McCarthy period, it was reinstituted. And the act, the Espionage Act, has been criticized as an attempt to do an end run around the constitutional definition of treason. You see, the, the founders of our nation were very anxious to make sure that the term treason wasn't thrown around to attack people who were dissenters. So they put within the Constitution a very narrow definition, giving aid and comfort to the enemy uh, in as the only way you could be convicted of treason. But as you saw in that television clip of the 1950s, my parents charged under the Espionage Act of 1917, here's the press reporting executed for their crime of treason. So this was an effort to do an end run around the treason clause of the Constitution and turn dissent into treason. Well, now we fast forward to today and we have the possibility that Julian Assange will be charged under that act. That act, by the way, is uh, it's pages and pages and pages of things that can't, we, you can't do. And if you do it, if you disseminate, publicize information that the government today declares secret, then you could be subject to massive prison sentences. And Again, we have to place this in a broad context. A functioning democracy needs a free flow of information. But what we have in post-9-11 America is a vast expansion of the secrecy complex. So vast amounts of material can be declared secret. And then if you reveal those secrets, you can be sent to jail. And of course, this, uh, well, this undermines the basis for democracy. And that's what's going on here. And that doesn't even get into uh, the question of conspiracy. We're talking to Robert Mirapol, younger son of Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, and he'll stay with us uh, after break. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, back in a minute.